the cohort as an analytic object, as implemented in Clinical Looking Glass. Riddles in Accountable Healthcare, available through Amazon, either as a paperback or as a Kindle. In previous lectures, we demonstrated how to qualify people for cohort membership. Now we will show you how a specific implementation of a cohort object anchors and simplifies analytic production with three reusable and generalizable patterns. A cohort object has intrinsic properties for each of its members. Each member has a unique identifier. Each member has an index date time from which all elapsed time will be measured. Each member has an index event and attributes associated with a patient's index date time. Just to remind you, the following are examples of events. Laboratory test results. The fact of a hospital admission. The fact of an emergency room visit. Medication prescription. Systolic blood pressure. A pain score. A cardiac echo study. All are events. Event attributes are variables naturally associated with the individual event. The event type laboratory test has the following attributes. The type of laboratory test. Is it a hematocrit? A white blood cell count? A serum sodium? The numeric value of the laboratory test. Is it a hematocrit of 15? A hematocrit of 30? A categoric value of the laboratory test, if it exists. Some laboratory tests are not numeric, they're categoric, so you might see positive, negative, or indeterminate as a result of the laboratory test. There might be a text associated with the laboratory test. So it might tell you the following are the results in genomics, or the following are the results in an SPEP. Inpatient admission, for example, has the following attributes. In fact, it has much more, but those give you just a flavor of the attributes it does have. There's an ICD-9 diagnosis attribute, which has a numeric value, a human recognizable English text, like heart failure or pneumonia. It has a notion of present or absent on admission. It has a notion of primary diagnosis or secondary diagnosis. The inpatient admission has associated with it a variable called admitting, admitting physician, a variable called DRG or diagnostic related group, length of stay, disposition of discharge, was the patient discharged alive or did he expire during the hospitalization? It also has an intrinsic notion of duration. That is, is it an amount of time that spans from the beginning of the admission to the end of the admission. It is during that time that other events can happen, and we'll talk more to this issue later. <coughs> what can you immediately do with a cohort object? Well, you can edit it. You can modify its creation rules, so you can create a similar but different cohort quickly. You can summarize it. This provides documentation for the rules used in its creation. You can browse it. This allows you to see the attributes of the event associated with each cohort member. And you can share it. You can share the cohort with another member of the Clinical Looking Glass ecosystem. What are the three analytic methods? the three reusable patterns. There's the time to outcome method. This measures the elapsed time from the index date of each cohort member until some outcome. There is a list method. This allows you to look at the attributes of the events or look at other events related to that 
member. There's the time and range method that lets you find out how much time a patient spent in each range of laboratory test value or any continuous variable. There's significant privacy protections with the cohort object model using analytic patterns. You're able to do a tremendous amount without ever seeing the identifiers. The next lecture will allow us to review the analytic patterns, two temporal and one list. Suggested reading, riddles in accountable healthcare.